we're in a bit of a crisis mode. I'm talking, of course, about the casting rumor that threatens to shake the foundations of a childhood franchise that we all love. No, I'm not talking about Ghostbusters, though we will talk about that soon. I'm talking, of course, about Indiana Jones and the rumor that Chris Pratt will take over for Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones. What are we doing? Why would we do this? Now, Chris Pratt, let me appeal directly to you if you're watching, which I'm sure you are. <laughs> you are one of the most beloved actors currently in America. You are Star-Lord. You are Andy Dwyer. You're some delightful character from Jurassic Park that we don't know yet. Why are you doing this to us? Please don't play Indiana Jones. Please persuade 80-year-old Harrison Ford to put the hat and wit on one last time. And you could just play his son or jovial nephew. I don't know. You're more fun that way. We'll talk about all this and more. This is Geek 360. Welcome to Geek 360. This is where we get all of our geekly weekly news. 360 degrees, that's a full circle. For those of you that don't know math, I'm a bit of a mathematician myself. And I'm joined by a couple math whiz slash geeks. First, the Robin to my Batman, the Lois Lane to my Clark Kent. You can catch her on her podcast, Fashionably Nerdy, Jet Set Geek. Nerds. Jet Set Nerds, and Stalking LeVar. Basically... If there's stalking, nerds, jet sets, or fashion, Stephanie Pressman's going to handle it. Let's hear it for Stephanie Pressman. Hello. Woo! Yay, me. Nice. Also joining me tonight is a good friend of mine, creator of Mockpocalypse, every Thursday night at 9 p.m.? No. 8 p.m. 11 p.m. 11 p.m. on Access TV. Well prepped for today's intros. Creator of Mockpocalypse on Access TV. You also may recognize him as Principal Cox on MTV's Awkward. Or maybe you might see him in the upcoming feature film, Blood Sucking Bastards. Neil Gargiulo, ladies and gentlemen. I have moderate levels of success. Thank you. That's Bravo. right. Guys, I'd love to sit here and banter with all of you, but we've got an action-packed week of geek news. Let's get right into it with Geek 360 Movies. Now, another casting incident happened this week when we found out who was going to be playing the Ghostbusters in <laughs> Ghostbusters 3. We got Kristen Wiig. We got Kate McKinnon. We got Leslie Jones. We got Melissa McCarthy. Okay, female Ghostbusters, we should all be fine with that. I'm personally fine with it. Here's my issue with the casting. Kate McKinnon and Kristen Wiig are very similar actresses. They're both kind of panicky, skinny white women. I think maybe we could have got a little more interesting with our casting. Maybe you throw a Jennifer Lopez in there. Maybe you throw a Willow Smith. Stephanie as our only female on the panel today. Am I? Oh, okay. I would like to know how you feel about this casting. You know, I'm excited. It's like Bridesmaids 2, you know? Uh, just throw Slimer in as the flower girl. Um, but really, I'm, I, I've been waiting for Ghostbusters just like everybody else. Sure. And how exciting is it that now they'll have, you know, designer proton packs, you know? Fendi, Kate Spade, Marc Jacobs. Indeed. Proton packs. About it. I'm incredibly excited about it. I couldn't be more excited about it. And I see on the internet, there are a lot of people who are very frustrated because it's a deviation from the original Ghostbusters. And to them I say, it's okay to like different things. These are different things. It's just something different. And it's okay to have different things. Everyone needs to relax. I agree. I say if there's money to be made outside of the Indiana Jones franchise, which I'm on record as saying, don't reboot. <laughs> I say reboot it. You want to make Back to the Future with some crazy people? I say Michael Keaton would make a great Doc Brown. Did I just reboot a franchise? Maybe I did. I think it just happened. Somebody <laughs> put a check into an account. Question is, who's going to play Janine, and are we going to reverse gender roles, and are we going to have a male Janine? Oh, yeah, Jaleel White is playing... Jaleel White's playing... Janine, there's no Urkel, question about it. Urkel, uh -huh. <laughs> Urkel for Janine. Uh -huh. And I would like to play Lewis. I mean, I've said this from the beginning. You are very yeah. Moranis. -like. And from the beginning of your life. Yeah, You've been I really trying have. to do this for years. It's like Janine or Lewis. And well, if we're reversing genders, then yeah, Lewis it is. Very good. All right. Moving along to television. We are at the mid season of our comic book shows. I'm talking about shows like Walking Dead, Gotham. Constantine is basically at the end of its run. Arrow, The Flash, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Agent Carter, for crying out loud, there's a hundred of these shows now. 
We're at the midseason of their seasons. How are we feeling they're doing? Personally, I'm a Gotham man myself. Catch the Gotham After Show. Shout out to that on the stream, <laughs> on this very network. Uh, I think Gotham is catching its stride, some, uh, some bumps in the road. Uh, I also enjoy The Flash. Now, uh, there's so many of them, it's impossible to keep up on them. Neil, which one are you watching? It's the one that I've been watching since the beginning and that most people are watching in the United States. It's Walking Dead. Yep. It's Walking Dead all the time. It's re-watching Walking Dead. It's watching dead humans eat people. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you go to sleep after that. And you have nightmares and then you get to work the next day. <laughs> Everyone's real excited about that pattern of life and I'm comfortable with that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm not caught up on Walking Dead, but I do watch it and I love it. I love Constantine. Uh, I'm really hoping it's coming back. Mm -hmm. um, I, I haven't watched uh, Agent Carter yet, but I'm excited for that. And I love Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Gotham, I stopped watching a few episodes you in. gave up on Gotham. I gave up on it. You know, it's going to sound really catty and like estrogen uh, of me, estrogen fueled of me. But Jada Pinkett Smith... Um, she looks like she's had too much plastic surgery, and in HD, it's just too much. Right. So we got to get you a tube TV so you can watch it in standard yeah. definition. Yeah. I'll say going to Constantine for a second. Constantine is an example of me for me of a show that I love the concept so much, and I love the like the heaven and hell battle and everything that goes along with that. Sure. That. I can just get on board even if I realize it's not as good as what I want it to be. I'm still sucked in because of the original content that it came from. Gotcha. Well, I think that pretty much covers it. Guys, we're going to be right back with some more geekly discussion after this message from the stream.tv. Just in case you missed it live. In case you missed it live. Just in case you missed it live. Oh, just in case you missed it live. In case you missed it live, I'm doing something right now. <laughs> so we're all super excited. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this is dancing. So what too. would that be like a seven? <laughs> I cannot. I literally cannot. You guys have got to get it together. <laughs> Don't hate the player. Don't hate the game. Hate the contract you didn't get. He's a coward. Mm -hmm. He's a giant chicken shit. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Oh my <laughs> gosh. It's going to be like <laughs> Hurricane Whoa. Watch out for those girls. Um, they are gagging them. Hold the phone. Hold on. Bro. Ben, the more brutal you are, the more power you have. Right. That was sexy. It was hot. It was heated. I was into it. You are going to be the most high paid hooker in the world. <laughs> Go ahead and invite your friends and everybody. Tell your mama. Tell them, don't head, turn the stove off and get up on the computer so we can get <laughs> on stream.tv. Thank you again for joining us. And until next week, bye bye. My geek babies, welcome back into my warm embrace. We're ready to keep this train rolling, but first, a few shout outs to those of us who have joined the live chat. For Quad, my man, back again every week. We love you so much. I want to give a shout out to Star Drew, and I want to give a shout out to Jack Sot. Jack Sot, if I'm saying that correctly. If not, tweet at me, tell me I'm an idiot, and I'll do it correctly next week. All right, let's move back into this. We're going to talk games now Geek 360 games. And we're going to talk Need for Speed. Now, we got Need for Speed coming out on the phone. You know, we were used to it on consoles. It's now a phone game. It's available on Android, soon to be available on iPhone. That sounds pretty great. But here's the thing. EA Sports is going to charge you for gas to play Need for Speed. So it's one of those pay or wait things where you can either wait 24 hours to refuel your tank for free or pay. This is fucking crazy to me. I'm so sorry, but to pay... For this kind of game, what is happening? Why not just buy a game once for an expense, like buy a console, and never have to worry about stuff like this again? Am I insane? Am I overreacting? No, look, people have choices. People have choices. You have a choice to purchase the game or to not purchase the game and then purchase another game and then 
that game will lose a lot of money and they won't make decisions like that anymore. So you have a choice here mm. and make a choice that you feel is appropriate. Sure. That's it. it, it that's just how it works. I mean, I, I don't have an issue with it as long as it works. If it works for them, then people clearly have the need. So we're talking, oh, I like that. A little need pun. Boop. A little hint of a pun. Come hint on, water. <laughs> Bringing the show together each and every week. We love you, Hint Water, even if you only favorite the tweets and don't retweet them. Speaking of which, you can follow us at Geek360Show. Send us some questions. Send us some criticisms. Send us a little love. I'm sorry, Stephanie, did you have any thoughts? Um, well, the price of oil barrels is down so low that it's probably going to be cheaper to buy real gas than gas within the game. Excellent. How much are they, are they planning on charging? Well, here's where it gets even more batshit crazy. They're going to create a currency of gold. And the more premium gold that you purchase, the more gasoline. Like, at some point, you're going to have to fight a Saudi pirate to play this game but in real life. It's on the gold standard. No. Yeah. I feel like they're making good choices. They're moving in the path of the United States. Look, listen no. to your Uncle Tom here, okay? I want you to trust no. me. We are boycotting. <laughs> that sounds, there's a connotation that comes along with All that. right, disregard that. <laughs> We're boycotting Need for Speed here at Geek360 until they give us the gas for free. Give us our gas back. Hashtag free the gas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear God. Oh. All right, now. Saudi Arabia, send it. Free we, the gas. We got to rein it in. We got to rein it in. It's time to uh, feature a new segment we like to call our Geeks of the Week. And we've got a very special Geeks Ooh. of the Week. We're talking Ooh. about Seattle Geekly, a podcast that comes on, I have to assume Geekly is short for weekly, comes on every week. You can find them at seattlegeekly.net. Follow them on Twitter, at Seattle Geekly. They've got episodes on everything. Games, magic, wizardry, movies, TV, anything you could possibly want. Shout out to Shannon Flowers and Matt Hammond for running and producing that excellent podcast. Now, finally, we're going to get into a little Geek 360 tech. And I'm personally excited about this news. Twitter has announced that it's going to now have its own video function, which essentially you can shoot and edit videos directly to Twitter. Now the videos will be, you have to, they have to be within 30 seconds. So basically you can create 30 second vines, post them directly to Twitter. Twitter will get credit for all the clicks. Now Facebook inserted their video function and it took them eight months to pass YouTube in terms of clicks. Do you think Twitter is gonna be the new thing in video? Absolutely. I think it's going to be great. I mean, people have, uh, it, Twitter is so popular and it allows for cyber bullying on a new level. And that's what I think a lot of people are excited about, that you can cut together a video and really torture someone. Um, and yeah, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a big hit. Great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> cyber bullying. I mean, the beauty with YouTube is that there's money behind it. Right. With, with YouTube, clicks equal money, is, is it going to be the same with Twitter? Is, I, that's my question. I mean, that's where the wild west of the internet is so interesting. Can you monetize these, these uh, Twitter videos? Is there going to be branding? Are we going to see 30 second Mountain Dew tweets? Uh, will Twitter continue its lax pornography policies with these sure. videos? <laughs> this, this year at Sundance, um, the first film shot on an iPhone 5S mm -hmm. premiered at Sundance. Right. There was a film that was shot on the iPhone that premiered at Sundance. The quality is so high, right. the videos are going to be great that come out of it. I, uh, I, I do a panel at Comic-Con that's a creator's panel, and this year we challenged people to shoot on their iPhones too and to send us videos. So we'll be looking forward to, to what's coming out this year. That would appear this is the future of our geek content. We're going to have to turn our phones on and tune in. Now, you were mentioning Sundance. This is an appropriate transition. Neil, your film, Bloodsucking Bastards, produced by your comedy group, Dr. God, at Dr. God Comedy. Shout out to them. Uh, your film, Bloodsucking Bastards, premiered at Slamdance. You opened the festival. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the movie? Yeah, uh, so uh, Bloodsucking Bastards is a horror comedy. Um, our comedy group, Dr. God, uh, we are the writing team behind it. We are in the cast. Uh, we worked with a company called Fortress Features. Blah. Fortress Features <laughs> and, uh, and maybe this year Productions. And it's a comedy that we worked with. Um, we worked with a lot of great cast. We came together. Uh, we've been trying to do this for a couple of years and it finally came uh, together. And you said uh, great cast. Can you tell us some of the people who act in the film? Absolutely. Uh, Pedro Pascal, mm -hmm. uh, the, the Red, Red Viper. Viper from Game of Thrones. Um, uh, Emma Fitzpatrick, Joey Kern, yeah. Frank Kranz, Joel Murray. Mm -hmm. A lot of really great people. Cameo by uh, Matthew Lillard. 
Very I'm not nice. sure if that's a spoiler or not. Um, <laughs> well. And uh, and yeah, uh, a lot of great folks. And uh, we play the supporting cast: um, Parvez, uh, Parvez China, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Marshall Givens, and Zabeth Russell. Um, yeah, it's really, really fun. A really fun environment. I get to work with my best friends, and we got to put this thing together, um, and it's just gotten great results. It got uh, it got a little bit of love today. Got a little bit yeah. of love. Can you tell us about that? Is there how much can you talk about that? Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be released in theaters this year. That's excellent. Um, it looks like later this year. There's no real info yet, but uh, it was purchased and it's coming out. And you can go to a movie theater and you can watch it on a date, and you can hold somebody next to you, and then maybe you'll kiss at some point. Now, I need a little bit of honesty from you right now. Uh, when the movie was sold, how much do you believe my three seconds of screen time weighed in the uh, decision-making when money changed hands? Um, we had to cut all of that. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, and can you tell us uh, real quick before we uh, wrap up here a little bit about Slam Dance? Slam Dance is, uh, is a festival that goes at the same time as Sundance. It's been around for 21 years, Sundance 31 years. And where Sundance has a, a caliber of film that, you know, some might say it's not the most commercial friendly film, Slam Dance will give you fun films that you want to go see. And it was a blast and they were all so amazing. It was a really, really fun time. And I, I slept for about eight hours over the course of seven days. They really make it, they really make it hard for you to sleep. Wow. Yeah. That sounds incredible. Uh, Neil, thank you so much for joining us today. Stephanie, anything you want to plug before we say goodnight? I'll see you guys on Twitter and everything else. All you can right. find all my projects there. Follow all her projects on Twitter. Guys, we can't do this without you. Please tweet at us, at Geek360Show. We're going to do some man on the streets. If you have some questions you'd like us to take to the streets, tweet them to me. Tweet them directly at Tommy Bechtold. Tweet them at the at Geek360Show Twitter. Whatever you want to do, we appreciate you watching so very much, and we'll see you next week. Oh, yeah, do you want